It's a very lean dish, it's a very healthy dish, simple to cook in the steamer as well. I have here a mandolin. It allows me to slice the carrot nice and evenly. Same with the courgette. Now, I only want to use really the green outside. The center of the courgette's a little soft and spongy, and when you cook it, it just goes to a mush. By making sure everything is cut the same thickness, it's going to prevent anything undercooking or overcooking. So next is the celery, cut into thin, even-sized strips. And the fennel next, exactly the same as the celery. Take your slices of carrot and just fan them out like a deck of cards. And last, strips of courgette. Now I'm going to prepare the potatoes. So a little tip here, if you're peeling a lot of vegetables and you want to minimise your washing up, just take a piece of cling film onto your board and peel straight onto the cling film. Once you've peeled that, you gather everything up and in the bin. We take your mandolin, you want it about the thickness of a playing card. So about this thick, okay? And we take our slices of potato, lay them out, just like a deck of cards. And as thin as possible, standing above so you get a clear view of what you're slicing, rocking the knife back and forward, allowing the potato to slice cleanly through. You need to remove any starch from them, so into a small clean bowl, and just run them under cold water. Too much starch prevents them from crisping up. Just drain them through the sieve. Vegetable oil is the best oil to use for this. It's got a higher flash point. It's uh, got neutral flavour as well, so it's ideal for frying. It's got also a better shelf life, so you can reuse it a few times. Before I start to fry the potatoes, I'm going to give them a, a quick dry. So I take my dish towel here, empty them onto the cloth, Pat them dry, give them a little rub. You don't want any wet potato going into the oil. It's going to start them spitting everywhere. The oil, the temperature that I need to set this at is 180 degrees. To avoid any spillage, make sure that your pan is uh, maximum half filled with the oil. Don't throw them all in at one go. Just give them a quick movement with the slotted spoon, just so there's no sticking. Remove the spoon and just let them fry. So cooking time for this is around two to three minutes. Do them in smaller batches. If you're cooking for four to six, do them in batches of two to three. At the end result, what we're looking for is a nice crisp texture, a nice golden appearance to them. You can do them ahead. They'll store in the, in the kitchen for a few hours. They won't go soggy or anything like that. So that's them colored beautifully there. I'm gonna remove them with my spoon. Just drain off any excess oil onto the paper towel. To finish, just season them very lightly while they're warm with a little salt the fish stock onto a high heat, bring that up to the boil. I've got a clove of garlic, I want to peel this and cut in half. That goes into the stock, a branch of fresh tarragon, I'll drop that in as well. Just as it's starting to simmer, I'm going to place into the stock first of all the hard vegetables. So I've got here the carrot, the celery and the sliced fennel. They go in first, spread them out, make sure that they're all covered. That's going to boil. So you want to cook the vegetables for around three minutes. Take a piece of the carrot out. You should just be able to break it up simply with a spoon. That's an indication that the carrots are ready. Last of all, the courgette. As they're a soft vegetable, they're literally just going to take 30 seconds to cook. Okay, simply take the vegetables, pass it through the sieve, capturing the stock in the smaller pan, and then onto your tray. Spread out your cooked vegetables evenly. Take the two halves of garlic, drop them back into the stock, along with the, the branch of tarragon. While the vegetables are still warm, I'm going to season them with salt. So take a pinch and just flick that onto the veg, mix them around. So the vegetables seasoned while they're warm, that dissolves the salt onto them. This liquor here, the stock that they were cooked in, we're going to be reducing that down by two thirds, and that's going to create our lovely vinaigrette. 
If you add the salt at the beginning, this is going to turn out tasting salty. This is the bream already filleted. Very versatile fish to work with. Great to barbecue on the grill. It's also great pan fried. Very good steamed as well. Very healthy fish to eat. I want to take the fillet, very lightly seasoned with a little salt. What I have here is a, a white plate around 20 centimeters in diameter. What I'm going to do is take some of my cooked vegetables, set them into the plate, spread them out. Two or three whole chives, just scatter them across the veg as well. And my seasoned fish fillet, lay it so the skin side's pointing upwards. So I take a sheet of cling film over the top of the fish and just tightly wrap around the plate. So that's the dish ready to cook. What's great about this is it's something you can prepare in the morning. It's covered with cling film now, so you can pop that in the fridge, take it out tonight, cook it literally into the steamer for 10 minutes. Place plate with the fish, making sure that the cling film doesn't have any tears in it, into the steamer, lid on. I'm gonna cook that for eight to 10 minutes. I'm gonna now peel the tomato. The best way to do that is have a pan of boiling water ready. Once the water's at a simmer, drop the tomato in. Just count to six, tomato out. So starting up with the stem, just peel the skin away. Cut it in half lengthways and then into quarters. I'm going to remove the seeds. Just to get that professional look to them, that restaurant finish, take your fillets of tomato onto a clean piece of towel and just dry them off. That just removes any excess seed on there. Just square off the fillet. So I'm going to cut this one into three slices. So one, two, three, evenly. And then I'm going to square that up 90 degrees. And I'm going to cut again to nice even sized dice. And that is restaurant grade tomato concas. So the sea bream has been in there now for um, eight minutes. So just with a cloth, pull the plate out. You can see here that on the edge it's nice and white. I'm just applying a little pressure with my finger into the thickest part of the fillet. And as it presses down, the flesh is springing back, which is a sign that it's cooked. So the last steps now for this dish to finish off the stock. Once it's reduced by around two thirds, I need to pass off the stock to a fine sieve. Squeeze the flavors out of the garlic and the tarragon anything that's collected at the base of the sieve. Bring it up to the boil. And while that's happening, I'm going to create my vinaigrette. A good quality olive oil, one to two tablespoons. Cherry vinegar, half a teaspoon in there. Some caster sugar, just a pinch. Give it a little whisk together. And as this is reduced, you take Vinaigrette, pour it in, in a steady stream. As you can see, it's emulsified together. I'm going to season the concasse separately with a little salt. Mix that through into my warm vinaigrette. A few drops of fresh lemon. Give that a mix in the pan. That's the sauce ready. Back over to the fish and remove the cling film. Let's take the skin off. Take it from one end with a small knife. Just pull one movement and off it comes. Just a few drops of lemon juice on top of the fish. So onto a warm plate, just scrape it all into the center. Lift the fillet up. Pull out some of your vegetables, some of the vinaigrette. Doesn't need a lot, maximum three tablespoonfuls. A little ball of your straw potatoes. That's the dish ready. Fantastic summer style dish. 
easy to prepare. It's delicious. It's got great textures from the steamed fish. You've got the slight bite from the vegetables. You've got all these beautiful flavors from them. And then you've got the crispiness from the straw potatoes as well. A great summer dish to serve.